Hi, it's Darius, and in this video we're going to be talking about functions in JavaScript. But first, let's go over the challenge from last video. The challenge was to increment game.score by 1. You may have tried game.score plus 1, but that would be too easy. Because you see, what this does is just calculates the sum of game.score and 1. That's it. It just calculates it. It does not change the value of game.score. In fact, the output is just lost. It doesn't go anywhere. We can catch it by assigning the output to a variable like that. And now they'll be summed and the output stored in sum. But that still doesn't really fix the problem because game.score hasn't changed. So, we overwrite the value of game.score with the sum of itself plus one. So you see, this just calculates the sum based off of the, the left and right inputs, and then we store that result in game.score and that will do what we want. Because we repeated ourselves, and as programmers we don't like to repeat ourselves, there is a shorthand, the plus equals shorthand, that you could use. And that will do the same thing. Or, if you're even more lazy, you can use the plus plus operator, the increment operator, which will also increase a variable by one. I'll note that the plus equals allows you to increment by any number, whereas plus plus will just increment by one. You'll also notice that I used const to, uh, to declare game as an object, but then I did modify game, right? So why did I use const? Well, I didn't reassign const. You see, remember that whenever you declare something with const, it won't let you reassign it. So I can't say game is equal to false after I just said game is equal to some object. And yes, JavaScript will be angry at me. Invalid assignment to const game. But as long as I don't change what game itself is assigned to, I can alter its properties. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's it for our, the challenge. Let's talk about functions. So perhaps the most pure definition of a function is something that takes some input and returns an output. Okay. Um, and you might remember something like this from math class where you would have like f of x is equal to 1 over x and then any time that you said um, like f of 10, the output of that would be 1 over 10 or 0.1 or something, okay? So functions have inputs and outputs, but in JavaScript, functions can uh, contain any number of JavaScript operations before it gets to producing the output. And that's really handy because that means not only functions are just things that take inputs and outputs, but they can also simplify our code by storing large amounts of reusable operations. Um, so just think of all that's involved in making the alert box that we get from calling the alert function. We don't get to see the code that happens behind the scenes. We see it, it working, but 
there's a lot of other JavaScript that would have to happen if you were to try to code everything that alert does. Um, you know, interacting with the browser and but we don't have to deal with any of that mess. We just run alert and it takes care of all that behind the scenes. So it's also for functions are also for writing uh, reusable tasks. Now in JavaScript we use the function keyword uh, to make to make functions. How convenient. And then we give it a name. And then after that, we can uh, specify what are called. Uh, we'll just specify our inputs. And when someone uses our function, whatever value they uh, put in, it's just going to store it in a variable that we call it, what we call it, which is x in this case. Then comes the body of the function where we do the thing to calculate whatever we want and then finally we can return the result, whatever that was. Which in our case, let's say uh, let result equal 1 over x and then we can return. Oh, well, that, that wouldn't help. We can return result. There we go. So now I made a JavaScript function that behaves just like this one we talked about earlier. Um, let's run the function. Uh, how about let out equal f and then we need to pass in some data. Let's do 10. And we can console.log what output stores. Output stores the value 0.1. So you would say that f returned 0.1. All right. Now um, whenever you run a function, it just returns a value, and you and a good way to think about this is JavaScript just replacing the function call with the value that it returns. F of 10 is equal to 0.1, so we could just say replace that with 0.1. Store it in out console.log out, or get rid of the middleman altogether. and put it right there. That's totally fine. Real quick, I want to specify that this is called function declaration and it's like making a function. Designing it, you know? So that later on you can uh, invoke function invocation in let's go invoke but that's too crazy of a word for me so um, what most people just say is you call the function like hey function do this uh, you call the function or you run the function I might use those two exchange in uh, interchangeably so let's say invocate whoa in Invocation. You know what? I'm not sure if the word invocation has a C or a K. Someone can, uh, you know, invocation. I know why I'm confused. I never thought about that. It changes from a K to a C whenever you go from invoke to invocation. English is, is such a, a wonderful language. Okay. Invocation is run your function, aka calling. Call the function. So 
some notes on the function name. You can use any letters, capital or lowercase, underscores, or numbers. And the numbers, though, must not be at the beginning. Or you, you may not start a function name with a number. You can also use a dollar sign anywhere in the function. Other than that, you shouldn't use, or you can't use any other symbols like a dash because that's a minus, that's a subtraction, and obviously no parentheses because that would confuse, you know, that'd be very confusing, or, you know, pretty much every other symbol either has some other reserved function or JavaScript or just doesn't make much sense. And so, um, yeah, everything I have typed in here is all that you can use. And you can use any of these anywhere in any combination, except, of course, numbers that can't come at the beginning. All right? This does mean there's uh, you have the ability to use a snake case for multiple words in your function names. No spaces, of course. Spaces are not allowed. Uh, or you could use camel case. I'll be using camel case just as most other JavaScript developers will. It's kind of co a convention. The other thing is your function name should be descriptive of what you're doing. You don't want to call it f because no one knows what f means. It's just a function. So instead, maybe call it inverse. Now we know what it does. You also don't want to get ridiculous with your names and make them very, very long, like inverse function that does math. Because you will get annoyed writing, writing that over and over again. So for obvious reasons, try to keep it short, concise, but descriptive. Careful doing abbreviations in function names. Um, it's it's really up to you. But if you're abbreviating all sorts of stuff, you know maybe it's maybe that's a good signal that you just need to come up with a different way to name it because other people won't understand what you're unless it's a commonly known abbreviation. Um, there's no need to abbreviate it just to make it shorter. Okay, I want to talk a little bit more about um, the inputs. So we actually have a different name than just input. They're called arguments. I don't know why it sounds like you're arguing with your function to get it to do what you want, but they just call them arguments. So instead of inputs, we call them arguments, and you can have any number of arguments. So instead of an inverse function, because that really only does take one input, you might have an add function that takes two arguments and returns their sum. You don't have to store in a variable called result like I did in the other one. Whoops you can just return it directly and save a little bit of code if your function is simple enough to fit in one line of course um, yeah so now we have two arguments and we can specify two things for it to add and oh, I, I call it F that's not very useful Okay. Um, and we can console.log what's the result of running the add function with 12 and 54 it'll give us a number you should be careful that in JavaScript it doesn't does not check to make sure you actually passed in the right number of arguments if you only pass in one argument um, 
it will do strange things because it will try to add your first number to nothing. And yeah, well, you can only imagine what that's going to do. You also could specify too many accidentally. And what will happen is JavaScript will ignore any of the arguments that the function that you defined cares about. So we only defined two variable names. It's going to store 12 in A, 29 in the variable B, and 45 is going to get dropped, completely ignored. Um, though inside of a function, you can still access all of the arguments in inside of... Well, you know what? That's... We rarely use that, and probably too advanced. We won't go there. Anyway, you should know that JavaScript won't catch those sort of mistakes. Functions also don't have to take any arguments at all, and they don't have to return anything. Some functions just are as simple as a series of other commands that you want to run, like uh, console.log some things. And, um, well, that's, that's good enough. We'll just have one. And what we see here is it console.log, it did its thing, we didn't return anything, and so the result of running add, remember these get ignored, so we take those out. But now the result is undefined, because we did not return anything. Um, and, and so undefined is actually a type in JavaScript, and you can check to see if something is undefined. In that case, the result of add is undefined. Whoop. So yeah, this use of functions would is primarily for you know writing those reusable tasks. I mean, obviously, reusable tasks can take inputs and outputs. Uh, you might have a function that giving it a word it capitalizes it as the output or something but you don't have to have inputs and outputs you can just have it execute some JavaScript code um, that is perfectly fine too the other thing I want you to notice is that you can you can pass the output of a function directly in, as the input to another function. Let's let's put our add back together. So we could add three and five plus six. Okay, so in order to calculate this, JavaScript has to first add 5 and 6, which is, uh, of course, 11, and then it will be able to add, it'll, it'll plug in 3 and 11, and the output will be 14. So you can kind of chain functions like that. The other thing you can do is pass the function itself as an argument. So let's make this just uh, return. <laughs> this is a function that takes an input and returns that same thing as an output. Um, actually, we're not even running it, so it doesn't matter. But what we see is if you console.log the function add, it just describes the function to us a little bit. And uh, here this will be strange. I can pass the function add as an argument 
into the function add, which will, that means a will equal add and it will return add. And then we'll console.log add and it will be the same thing. Okay, so that's, uh, that's interesting, probably not very useful yet, but I wanted you to see that not only can you pass the result of a function in as an input to another function, but you can pass the function itself as an input. Uh, what happens if we go up here and whatever thing that they pass in, if we run it and return the result? You know, you know, I don't think I really want to go there. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into... But yeah, that's just starting to make my brain hurt. Okay. Oh, so functions, yes. Um, they're definitely something to to practice, and you you want to try to memorize some of the terms if you want. We have also the syntax. Um, that's what practicing will help you with. You might want to. I don't know, make add and subtract functions. That'd be pretty basic, but um, you really just want to get yourself familiar with making functions. And, oh, how, how about, okay, so here, here's a small challenge. The challenge for this video is to make a function that takes two inputs, two numbers, and it will return the smaller of the two. Okay, that's your uh, challenge, and we will see you in the next video. Please practice making functions um, to get the syntax down, and we'll be able to move on to greater things. Alright, thanks for watching.